today on Ask This Old House. Have you ever tiled before? No, never. <laughs> if you want to add a tile backsplash to your kitchen, there's some easy ways to do it. Right there, that is where we're going to cut this tile down. I'll show you a way to stop floods dead in their tracks with even a little bit of water dripping. <laughs> okay. So now you hear the alarm. And this water feature not only looks incredible, it uses reclaimed rainwater. And I am going to show you how to install it. That's next on Ask This Old House. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House. The whole gang is here ready to answer questions about your house. So if you have any, we'd love to hear from you. Keep your letters and your emails coming. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, sir. What are you working on? Well, I saw that Tommy's doing a tile story on out to the home center to get some of the tools he might wow, need. Wow, that's usually my job. <laughs> hey, Tommy, I just picked hey. this stuff up for you. Uh, everything you need. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking for some uh, scissors. You got any scissors? Scissors. Nizzer, nippers. Nippers. I got the nippers. Scissors. Scissors. I think I nippers. Got some. Nippers. Nippers? Nip, nip, nippers? All right. Scissors? Perfect. You Thanks. Mean Hello. What's he doing? Where's he what going? What kind of a tile job is he working on? Thanks for coming over today, Tommy. I really, really appreciate My it. My pleasure. And look at the size of this kitchen. Look at the size of the island. It's huge. I love it. We love it. I mean, it's perfect for parties, for having friends over. We, we really love it. Get 15, 18 people around there with no problem at all. Absolutely. The kitchen's big. It's beautiful. It's bright. What's the problem? So the reason that I emailed you is I love to cook. Yeah. But there's no backsplash right, right along my cooktop here. Oh, behind it. I exactly. see. Yeah, you have a, what is called a four-inch backsplash here. And that's good for around the sink and wiping things on the countertop. But I agree. When you cook, if you have a pot and pans here, they can splatter on the wall. So you have to keep that clean. Have you ever tiled before? No, never. <laughs> okay, well, if you were to tile this whole backsplash around over here, on the other side there, you've got a corner to deal with. You've got all these outlets and switches to deal with. And for someone that hasn't tiled, you're probably looking at three or four long weekends to get this tiled. It's a lot of work. Yeah. My suggestion would be to tile right here under the microwave and run it down to the four inch backsplash that you have. And that will give you a place that you can clean the wall real easy and it'll act like an accent piece for the wall. That sounds perfect. All right. Well, I've got an idea and I've got some tricks I think we can use today that we can tile this and finish it all in one afternoon. Excellent. All right, I'll be right back. All right, Robin, here's the tile that you've chosen. It's a nice color. It's going to go good with your cabinets and your kitchen. And it's a great tile for a beginner. Great. It's a square detail and they stack right on top of one another. So it's easy to match and put together. There are actually patterns like this where it's actually called a subway pattern where they're rectangles and the pieces staggered out. So in some cases you'd have to cut it straight or you take the other piece and you marry it in, you line up all the joints. It's a little more work. Mm -hmm. All right. So the nice thing about this is that this is actually on a mesh and that holds this piece together rather than trying to put up each individual piece on the wall. Nice. Now a tile guy would come in and he'd mix up a thin set or a, or a mastic, use a V-notch trowel and he'd put it on the wall, work it in and then take the tile and push it into the mastic and make sure that it's laying flat. So what I want to use is this right here. This is like a big sheet of two-faced tape. If you look right here, these little nubs that you see is what we stick the tile to. That's sticky. And to hold this on the wall, we'll peel the back off, and it's sticky on that side, and we'll stick this whole thing to the wall, take our tile up, and push it on the glue. Perfect. The next thing is, is when you're grouting the tile, you have to get a bag of grout. You want to get the color that you have. You mix it up. You need a drill and water. Take it and you put it on there. Again, you'd have to wait 24 to 48 hours for the mastic to dry. And put it on. It can be messy. So what I got is some pre-mixed grout in the color that you want. Now what you have to do is open this up, take it out, smear it on the wall, fill all our joints, wipe it clean, and we're done today. Excellent. All right, let's get started. Now before we put our two-faced adhesive onto the wall, 
We want to make sure that the wall is really clean. So if you want to wipe that down really good, we'll have a nice clean surface. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. All right, the wall looks good, and it's dry, that's good. Now we could lay this on the wall or stick it to the wall, horizontally or vertically, but I think we'll do it vertically. So I'll get a measurement, and then you can cut them off on me. All right, so we need 15 and a half. All right, Tommy, I have the four sheets cut. Okay, great. Well, I've got everything covered with the drop cloth here to protect the area. I've run tape up the wall nice and straight, and that's where our tile is going to go in between them. So the next thing I want you to do is take these pieces and peel off the back. All right, perfect. Okay, so now before you stick it to the wall, let's flip it over and I want to show you something. See how this edge has a wider space before it hits to the glue? Mm -hmm. This is the side that we're going to overlap each sheet. Mm -hmm. This edge is a little narrower. The reason I had you keep the paper on there when we fold this down like this, this allows us to move it around, line it up, make sure it's straight, hold it on the wall like that, don't let it move. Take this piece that's very sticky, bring it up, and just touch it to the wall up there, not down here where the paper is. So we stick it on there. Now that holds it into position, it won't move. You fold it up, you then peel this out, and as you peel it, you just gently push it down onto the wall, and that makes it nice and straight and tight so there's no bubbles behind it. Okay? Why don't you finish doing that and work it down with your hand at the same time. Nice. Perfect. Nice. So now you're ready to do the next sheet. Perfect. And just to get started, let's just peel this one back just a little bit, not too much, so when you lift it up, you'll be able to grab it. Just like that. Okay, just work it down nice and easy. Nice. Now peel it off. There you go. Okay, so now I want to measure for our last piece. I'm going to have a little bit of an overlap, and I'm going to measure through the tape. And that's four and a half inches. Let's cut it an eighth of an inch less to be sure to get it in there without any problem. So we'll make it four and three eighths. Okay, so just push the top in place. Right there. Now what we want to do is make sure that the adhesive is really stuck to the wall. And you're going to just take this rubber float and bang it on the wall like that. So now let me show you what our layout is going to be. We can actually establish our width for our last piece to cut. So I'm going to take the pieces, I'm going to lay them on the wall like this, and I want to keep it on the line here, right on the edge. Take my next piece and lay it beside this one. I want to keep our grout line between the sheets about the same that's in the field, that spacing. Okay, so now for our last piece, we'll hold it into position, looking at my grout line. And right there, that is where we're going to cut this tile down. Good. Let's see. Did you make it? Yep. Perfect. Yep. Feel that right there. Right out of your way. Touch the backsplash right there, so now you'll feel if it's square. Don't let it touch the wall yet. Let it rest on it gently. Right about there. Bang it right onto the glue. Now that I'm banging it, you're not going to get it off. <laughs> Work it right up. Very nice. Okay, so then just gently push it in like a pro. Wow. Okay, now the last piece. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to finish it off by using this pre-mixed grout. I want you to go diagonally. 
Yeah, see, look at that, nice. Forcing it right in there. All right, Robin, stage one of your grouting is done. You did a good job. It's starting to set up. So now we need a bucket of clean water and a sponge because we're gonna wash it down. So all I want you to do now is take the sponge, get a little bit of water in it, not too much, because we don't wanna run all over the place, and wring it out so that it's damp. And you're just gonna take it and you're gonna gently rub it onto the wall, cleaning off all the excess. All right, I'll move the bucket out of your way. Rub it right on there, you gotta work it around. Yeah. See how it's starting to clean off? Yeah. Nice. All right, Robin, not bad. A little under two hours, and you have a tile backsplash behind your cooktop. It looks fantastic. Did a good job. I guess you could say you're a tiler now. <laughs> but seriously, the grout is not dry, and it won't dry until overnight. So I would suggest that maybe you wanna eat out tonight, don't use the cooktop. In the morning, you might notice a little haze over the tile. Just take a coarse rag and wipe it off and it'll polish that tile right up. Perfect, thank you so much for your help. My pleasure, again, you did a great job. Hmm. Nice fix, Tommy. Although, not to take anything away from you, but that was about as straightforward as you can get, right? I mean, there yeah. were no cuts, there were no outlets, no corners. Very simple. It was. It was width was perfect and the height was just right, so no tile cutting. But if you have to cut tile, it's a different ball game. You can cut tile with these right here. These are end nippers, and they cut tile, but they don't give you a real smooth edge. Here's another type of a nipper right here for glass cutting. But any way you look at it, if you're cutting around an outlet, you don't have to be that fussy because that cut will get hidden by the wall plate. The wall right. plate, yeah. All right. But if, let's say you have a tile like this. Now, this is a glass subway tile, a running bond. So you'd have to straighten out the edge first. Mm -hmm. Now you could straighten that out with a glass nipper like this, or... That's not easy to do well. No. Yeah. Or you could use a tile cutter that scores the tile. There's a wheel right here that will score the tile, and there's a piece right here that will actually allow you to snap the tile, but you'd have to score it and then individually snap each one. Right. Then you have to worry about cleaning up that sharp edge because it's glass. So you take a stone like this, you'd bring it over the edge of your table, and you'd smooth out the edge of the tile because you don't want to get cut. That's right. right. For right. my money, a wet saw has got everything going Absolutely. for it. What is it, 100, 100 and a half for these things? Under 150 Clean, bucks Clean, beautiful one. cut. You don't have to worry about the chance of nipping it the wrong way or even these things splitting. Right. right. Still have to clean up the edge. Yeah. We've, uh, we've even rented them before, yeah. too, if you don't yeah. want to buy the whole it's, thing. It's crazy. Right. Well, Still, a very nice fix yeah. either way. Yeah. Not taking anything away from you. She did a great job. She did. Look at you, Richard. What do you got going on? Water heaters, electronics? Today we're going to talk about catastrophic water damage, flooding in a house. Okay. There's plenty of things filled with water in a house. A glass line steel tank like this, they last, what, every seven to nine years. And if they fail, what happens? Full city water pressure starts to come in. Well, that's not all. You got you got washing machine hoses behind washing machines that could be on the second floor, dishwashers, a lot of different places. If you're not home, that water could be pouring in your house for days. So this is a master emergency shutoff device that sits at the water main. So imagine the water main coming from the street comes here. Here's the ball valve right here. So yep. if you look inside there, that's a full port ball valve that can close mm -hmm. or open. And that opens and closes based on a signal that it gets whenever right. it senses right. water. So this basic technology has been around for a while, but we used to be limited with what we had for sensing. It used to be it was hardwired sensors that would go down around the water heater. So there's a limited number of places you could do it. Not easy to snake that up to the second floor right. washing machine. So now this thing has one wire that goes to this receiver or hub mm -hmm. right here. And I'm seeing an antenna. Correct. So now with RF or Wi-Fi, it goes to these hockey pucks, these pucks. Very cool. Up to 78 of them. Wow. So a little sensor on the bottom, you little can, probes. You can put them strategically around a building. You say, all right, I want to be near the water heater. I need, need to be near the boiler, behind the washing machine, under the refrigerator, under the kitchen near sink, a behind a toilet, all kinds of different places, okay? Okay. So now I'm going to put one right here. I have a device hooked up to the sink right here. So I'm going to turn this on so we see water running right here. Yes. So now... So With even a little bit of water dripping. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so now you hear the alarm. And in a minute, you're going to see this shut off right here. So this is... There. We no just now shut off all the water in the house. Kidding. Holy mackerel. So now I can clear the alarm. Wow. Now you can go around the building and you can find which one. The red flash will tell you which one it is. And so it could be something 
not a flood. It could be somebody spilled some water, or snow came some in, sort and of that, whatever it is. Okay, so when that's the case, then we can just turn on and reset. Oh, the valve just opens back up. It's back up. Okay. So if you don't if you don't do that, and you still you're not sure. It also has a manual override here, so you're never going to be a prisoner of the technology. Wow, that is very cool. So you don't have to worry about these burst uh, right. washer machine hoses? Correct. There's another thing you don't have to worry about. This thing also has a low temperature alarm, meaning oh. you could put these in a basement, and if the basement ever got down to a place where the pipe could freeze, it could save the house. So somebody going away for the winter, this is a great thing. An ounce of prevention. I cool? love it. Yeah, that's very cool. Yes, All right. Sir. Thank you. Hi, Kate. Hey, Jen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I love your house. How long have you been here? About 11 years. And uh, I think it's about time we update our landscape. So are you pulling from websites? What are you thinking? What are you doing? Yeah, we're taking inspiration from different places and magazines and pictures. Uh, but we're just kind of doing it ourselves. We're not working with a designer. And it'll likely take us a few years because of budget to get everything finished. Well, that's always a constraint on every project. It's totally normal. Homeowners do it over the course of a couple of years. But the important thing is, is the sequence of the project. You want to get the hardscape, the bones in first, so you're not ripping up what you did the previous year. Uh, so you get your structure in, and then you move to the plantings, and then the lawn, and then you work your way out. Also, in your email, though, you mentioned something about a water feature. Yeah, it's on our wish list. We've seen some great stone water features we like, uh, but we're not sure if we're able to have one because of water restrictions. Well, first of all, every water feature is going to recycle water, so you're not continuously using new water. Um, just looking at your downspouts over here, I was thinking maybe we could put a bigger basin, so it would be like a rain barrel on steroids, recycle that water, put your water feature in, and then reuse that water on some of the plants in your landscape. What do you think? I love it. All right, in this sequence of your project, that should probably be the first thing we do because we're going to have to dig a pretty good size hole. So let's get started. We have some digging to do. So we're going to start digging out some of these plants so we could transplant for later, um, like this hosta and the ladies' mantle. So we'll go in, dig a nice little root ball around it, and we'll put it on the tarp for later. Sounds good. Okay. You want to get that half and I'll get this half? Nice. All right. This rhododendron is in tough shape and it's too big to dig out by hand, so we'll pull it with the excavator. Nice. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Rhody. Bye, yes. Now we can use the excavator to dig out the hole for the rainwater basin. So, how deep will they go, do you know? He's going to go about two feet deep, if we can. Do we want these rocks out of here? Yes. OK, Kate, the hole is to the correct depth, and it's nice and level. What do you think? I'm really glad we have the excavator. I am, too. It's my favorite tool. Uh, I didn't want you to meet my friend Fred Pape. Uh, he and I worked on a project very similar to this a couple years back. It was a pondless water feature. It was sculpted into the hillside. That water ran down, boulders nestled into the side, and all the water went into this underground basin and recirculated around. We're going to do something very similar to that here. Yeah, it's a very similar setup, except we're going to make the basin much larger because we're capturing that rainwater and reusing it. So you've got the hole just about set. Our next step is to dig a little bit of a pocket for our pump fault which you can see here, that's going to house the pump. A rubber liner is going to go in, and then these blocks go in. Sort of looks like a milk crate, but it's actually strong. You can actually drive over these when installed correctly. So when we put all these in and backfill it, we can put the weight of the large stone fountain on top. And then after that is all tucked in and soil back on top, we can do little plantings around it, like ground cover, and put your hostas back in. Great. So let's get to it. Let's do it. All right. So, Kate, we're just going to dig this square out down about eight inches so that the pump vault's recessed to the deepest point. The vault. Yeah, that looks good. Just drape this down in the hole. We'll get it spread out, try to get all as many wrinkles out as we can. So this landscape fabric we're putting down will protect the rubber liner from any roots or rocks from puncturing. 
now we can install the rubber liner. It's doubled in size so we can wrap all the way around the blocks all the way to the top. And then we put in one last layer of fabric to protect the rubber liner from the blocks that may puncture it. So here's what we're going to use for your fountains. We found these stones, and it's called a basalt rock. They're actually volcanic rocks. And what the water is going to do, it's going to shoot up the inside and trickle down and glaze the outside. These are beautiful. Yeah, they're very cool. What we need to do now is get them plumbed. So we're going to get some pipe up through that cord just about the top. We'll put an elbow on the bottom, a little pigtail off that that'll go into our plumbing manifold, which comes from the pump. So this is how we tie into the existing downspout of the house. This is our downspout filter to catch debris coming off the roof. The top is our first layer of defense with a layer of gravel. We'll catch the leaves and twigs of larger debris. And then inside of that, we've got our fine mesh net for the smaller de debris. It gets caught there. And then the clean water will come right out this pipe, right into our basin. All right, guys, let's bring some field sewn in. We'll wrap these a little bit, kind of go about 18 inches off the basalts, space them out irregularly. We don't want a perfect circle, but kind of close them in. So the water features in, what do you think? I love it. It looks amazing. It really does. And we were able to use a lot of your perennials from before to accent the outsides. Great. So it's all set. It actually runs by a remote control. Just want to hit that button, you can bring it to life. Wow. That looks cool. It's amazing. And that movement of the rainwater is just going to keep recirculating and add a healthy environment so there's no algae buildup. And not only is it beautiful, it's self-sustaining. By capturing that rainwater off the roof, we're keeping the basin full and giving you extra water that's available for reuse. On the, over on the side, there's a booster pump, which has a hose hooked to it. And you just use that for washing your car, watering the flowers, whatever you might need it for. Fantastic. I can't thank you enough. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having us. It was a really fun project. Absolutely. Next time on Ask This Old House. Swapping out a toilet can be easy and can often be done with just one or two tools. If you do a lot of it, you actually use something like this, a turkey baster, which gets you right down to the bottom. Make sure it's not the same turkey baster you use for Thanksgiving. Oh. <laughs> and there used to be a swing set back here that killed all the grass. I'll make it green again. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.